Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I'm Prophet Lopez, and I do have a word that I would like to share with, with some of you. I just recorded this entire segment <clears throat> a few moments ago, but for some strange reason, it did not record, which indicates that something doesn't desire for the people of God to get this message. But I'm looking at it right now, and it's recording. And I'm going to give you what God had gave me this morning. I'm going to share this thing with you. I don't understand why we as a people of God are compromising when it comes to the word of God. We have a few things that's being spread out into the land. And I'm going to tell you something when it comes to love. Let's talk about that for a second. We have people who say just love. And that's fine because love casts out fears. Love grafts us into the body of Christ. Amen. But let me tell you something. Even the man at the cross had to repent. The man at the cross had to repent. And he chastised the other one, his friend, who were making fun of Jesus Christ. And he said, what he had to say to Jesus, and Jesus said, well, this day you shall be well in paradise. Right? Well, they got a, a thing that I would like to share with you concerning what's unfolding in the body of Christ. We have people who are defiling their temples and expecting a breakthrough. That shouldn't be so. I'm going to give you, I'm bring you to a verse of scripture so you can know what I'm talking about. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor your bodies. We have people who are not honoring their bodies. We have people who are not honoring what God has. We're supposed to have our bodies holy and separated, made for the master's use. Matthew, the seven chapter and the six verse says, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to the pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you into pieces. How many of you know when you leave the presence of God? And you got filled with the presence of God. That's what the scriptures is talking about. When it says, when the evil spirit leaves. Amen. Seven more comes. That's because we're getting into the presence of other people who are unequally yoked. We're sitting in the council of the ungodly. And we have people who are supposed to be godly that's preaching false doctrine. Revelations. Let's go to that right quick. Revelations, the church of per, per Gamum, to the angel, the church of Pergamum, right? These are the words of him who has the sharp double edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who has put to death in your city where Satan lives. Watch this. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and committing sexual immorality. We have people who are teaching John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoso believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Watch this. He said, believe, right? He so believe. Believe denotes faith, meaning I have faith. The word teaches us in Hebrews, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead, meaning 
My faith is conjoined with my words, what I do with this temple, what I do with this body, what I do with my mind. My mind should be continually off the Lord. My body is sacrificed totally and set aside for God. God will not enter into an evil temple. Let me give you an example. There was the Philistines when they tried to bring the Ark of the Covenant next to an evil a evil um, God. Every time they came in, they seen that the evil God was bowing down. It was broken before the presence of the Lord. How many of you know that the Bible teaches us even when we take our communion, it says that people die because they don't take the communion correctly. And that's what's happening. The enemy understand if you if you take those things which are, are, are holy and try to mix it into the body, it breaks the body. So that's what he's doing. He's infiltrating strange doctrines such as homosexuality is all right. It's all right, amen. Such as 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 leaders, amen, can control the people. Amen. That is wrong and that is false doctrine. Jesus says in a 15th verse right here, likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nickelodeons. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against you, fight against them with the sword of my mouth. God is releasing the sword. That's right. He's releasing the sword into the land so that us as a people will understand that we can't do what we desire to do when we desire to do it and expect a holy outcome. You can't defile the temple and expect a breakthrough. We have to get to the place where we respect our temple. Our temple is holy and it should be undefiled. It's made specifically for God. The whole point of Job, the Job experience was to see if he would curse God and turn his back on God. That was the whole point of the, the, the whole deal right there. The pressure up against him. We have people where the pressure is coming on them. And they're compromising. They're compromising. Don't you understand that when a nation turns their heart from God without a question, even believers are prone to turn their hearts from God. That's right. There's a situation where the nation of Sodom and Gomorrah, they, 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 they did not follow God at all. And we're dealing with the United States where they're not following God properly. Amen. And here's the problem. People are compromising in the body of Christ to make others feel comfortable. To gain membership, to gain popularity. But I'm glad that I didn't gain popularity when I was in the world, nor when I came into the gospel. So I don't have another agenda. Amen. Glory be to God. So here it is when 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 Satan come up against the people of God, just like Lot, and it's happening right now. Lot was willing to give up something that was pure. He was willing to give up something. Amen. And I thank God for sending Jesus Christ, which was pure as the ultimate sacrifice. But the point that I'm giving you, the analogy that I'm trying to show you, he gave up his daughters the same way that people are willing to give up their temples to gain people, to gain an amen. And this amen don't understand that judgment is coming upon this amen. And Jesus is coming with the sword. God is not playing with this foolishness, people of God. We have to be aware what's unfolding. We have homosexual bishops. This is out of order. You know why this happening? I'm going to tell you why this happening. The Israelites, they were looking for a king. And God warned them, and he warned them, and he warned them, no, I your king. You don't require no other king. But they still were searching for a king. He said, okay, I'm going to give you a king, Saul. He's going to rule over you. He's not only going to rule over you, he's going to take your sons, your daughters. He's going to do whatever he 
feel like doing it. See, the enemy has a strategic plan to break down the body of Christ. So here it is, just because we desire for someone to feel good, just because we desire a leader instead of God as our God and God as our leader, we're accepting homosexuality because that's the status quo. Because that's what America right now, United States of America, has been de-whittled de to, have been brought down to. So now that everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah is doing homosexuality, it's all right now. We find a scripture, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe, if you just believe, you're going to make it there. That's not so. Because if you're still living, if you know it, and you do it not, it is sin. And to live in sin is death. That's right. And we got to have the apostles. And we got to have the prophets. And we got to have the teachers. And we got to have the whole fivefold and everybody connected to the, even, even, even the health ministries to start speaking up for God. And speaking up for his righteousness. And we got to start getting into our prayer closets. And we got to start seeking God like never before. And it's the only way that we're going to be able to stand up to the tactics of the enemy and the wiles of the devil and expose this foolishness. Amen. I pray today that your understanding was open. People say you, you're attacking, you're coming with the... Yes, the Bible says it's sharper, watch that, than any double-edged sword. It's meant to cut you. Amen. It's meant to hit you up. But God will give you healing. That's right. He said his ears, his countenance is upon the righteous. When you get into right standing with the word. God hears your prayers. He know that you're lonely. He know that they left you. He know that they abused you when you were younger. But just because they abused you. Just because they did you something wrong. Don't make it right for you to continue in the wrong or me to continue in the wrong. Everything that I've ever done, God exposed it. Put it out there in the open. So I can stand and tell this gospel the way that I'm telling it. In authority. Without compromising. I look you dead in the eye and tell you. If God done it for me. If he took lust out of my heart. If he done it for me. If he took the Jacob spirit, the swindling spirit out of me, if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. Just say this prayer with me, that the body of Christ will come to a full understanding. My people perish for what? Lack of knowledge, right? Let's come to the full knowledge and the truth of God. So we can gather our troops and take the body of Christ back. Amen. Father God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. God, you know where we're at in our lives. God, forgive me for being a swindler. Forgive me for being lustful. Forgive me for being adulterer. Forgive me, Father God. Make me new. Make me fresh, your heavenly Father, this day. Cleanse me with your word. Be quiet. I know I Make me a new person, O oh Heavenly Father. Establish me in the kingdom that I'll be able to be effective. In the name of Jesus, give me a discerning heart and a mind. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you, and I love you. Stand firm, amen.